Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Lee Fields is a funk and soul legend, 50 years in the making. Lee Fields, Faith Man, the documentary, feature documentary featuring Jessamine, Ansari, and Joyce Michan, Michan, excuse me, chronicles Fields' journey to find his place in soul music history from vinyl to virtual and back again. They both join us tonight to tell us about this amazing project. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Well, listen, I know you both have impressive resumes. So tell us, I'll let you each tell us a little bit about your background and and then we'll get into the documentary. I'll start with you, Jessamine. Okay, sure. Um, so I, I, I'm i in the documentary and TV world. Um, I kind of came up uh, at HBO Docs, uh, just working on, you know, different projects there. Um, <clears throat> and then you know, in TV, I've worked for networks like Food Network, um, Travel Channel, National Geographic, HBO Max, things of that nature. Um, and these days I do a lot of actually true crime writing. So I'm writing true crime scripts for Oxygen Network. Um, and yeah, that's me. <laughs> all the good things, all the good things. But what about you, Joyce? Yeah, um, so I'm a filmmaker and a coach. I um produce and direct independent films. And I coach other filmmakers to get their films made and get through what's stopping them from making their films or other creative projects. Um, and yeah, I have like a background of 15 plus years in the TV and film industry. Um, I've done a lot of unscripted TV, uh, executive producer on 90 Day Fiance, executive mm. producer for all of different Food Network shows. Um, including Chow House, which uh, I think is now shooting its second season. I did the first season. Um, I worked on Chopped for many, many, many years as a producer. Um, yeah. And so that's how I kind of got to know the ropes of uh, making unscripted content. And then I, I started to do my passion, which is to make feature documentaries and other uh, feature films. Wow. Both of you have impressive, like I said, impressive resumes. I was reading up on you. I was like, okay, these women know what they're doing. <laughs> so did you all both have this love for film and for directing? And was it always something that you had or is it something you kind of fell into? How did it happen for you? Yeah, I actually studied theater directing in college. We both went to Carnegie Mellon University. That's where okay. we Okay. And, um. So I was studying theater and something about it, it just didn't quite click for me. And so after I graduated, I needed a job and Jessamine was working on uh, P. Diddy's Making the Band. Okay. She's like, they need another production assistant. Do you want to come on? And I was like, sure. <laughs> um, I got for my waitressing job. And <laughs> so that's how it started for me. And then I was like, oh, this is really like the environment I want to be in. And I really enjoyed um, the process of working on a TV show. And so that's that's kind of how it grew for me. Awesome. And Jessamine, you're the one that found this story, found this project and uh, presented it to Joyce to collaborate on. How, tell us why it was important to tell this story. Yeah, so um, this this project we've been working on for um, um, a little yeah. over 10 years. This, yeah. this, <laughs> this actually um, all got started in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, and I had been wanting to make my own film for a while. I'm a writer and just working on all these other amazing projects at all these great places. Um, had me wanting to do my own project, but it seemed like everything that I was looking into, every story that I was researching, someone was already making that movie. Mm -hmm. So um, so one day my younger sister <clears throat> and her boyfriend showed me a music video for Lee's song, Faithful Man. Mm -hmm. And I was just totally struck by it. I mean, you know, obviously his music is incredible. Right. And then when I looked into his story, I was like, wow, this is an amazing story. Um, I, this this should be a movie. And I just assumed someone was already making it. So I reached right. out to him, with no expectations. Um, and to my great surprise, he was into it. He wanted to do it. And then I said, uh, I think I need a little help here. <laughs> and so, um, I called Joyce, we're friends from college. So, um, you know, we had always, we'd been in creative writing classes together. We always kind of had the idea that maybe we would work on something together. Um, so I called Joyce and she said, no way. Um, right. you know, I'm busy. <laughs> yeah. she said, I, I'm, I'm too busy for this, you know, but I said, let's just go out to Lee's house. So we spent a day filming with him and it was this amazing experience. He sang a song for us in his garage studio. Um, he told us his life story. 
And, you know, as we're walking away from his house, Joyce is like, all right, I'm in. And, <laughs> and that was that. And that's where it got started from. And, uh, and I read you all said that, you know, his fans, they go across different generations, obviously, because he started out in the 70s, really, uh, where he, and then had a resurgence in the early 2000s. So, and you all, you say, you know, there's a generational gap, but but you all, you all, you felt each other. You There was a bond that you all had while doing this project. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we realized that for our generation, right? Like we're like 90s kids, really. Right. Um, but for our generation, like music started to get very digital, right? Mm -hmm. And CDs and then there's Napster and like all that stuff. And like the, the sound of the tracks was was all like it, in this digital direction. And we realized that like the thing we love about Lee's music is is that analogness of it, right? It's like like what they were doing and and the tradition that he's coming from, it's so analog and that sound is so hard to come by. And it's so compelling, I think, for a lot of people in our generation who grew up with the music that we grew up with. Mm -hmm. And what was yeah. something, oh, good, please. Oh, I was just going to say in terms of Lee, you know, he's so open. Um, he's such a open person that, you know, he just sort of talks to everyone like, you know, like they're in the, his living room. And mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, we over time, we just kind of developed more and more of a trust with him and more of a bond mm -hmm. and um, built this relationship. Did you, did you obviously working on this project over a decade? Uh, I'm sure you all learned a lot about each other. What was something that stood out the most about Lee? About Lee? I, yeah. I mean, I would say for me, what started to strike me more and more is really his faith. And, you know, we ended up calling the movie Faithful Man mm -hmm. because he really is the faithful man. And that just became more and more resonant the longer we were in the project. You know, for us, it became sort of like a touchstone of like we were initially inspired by his story because we were fascinated by it and we were young and we were just intrigued and then the more the further along the road we got the more we really realized that we needed to take real inspiration from his story and have faith in ourselves and our ability to move the project forward and to take a lesson from his book so so that's what struck me I love yeah. You, yeah i think for me it, it's like he's such a regular guy at home uh -huh. Like he's such a family man and he's pretty s simple in terms of, you know, he likes to barbecue and spend right. time with family and stuff like that. And so to like see the man on stage, this like great, powerful singer mm -hmm. screaming and sweating and dancing and all of that. And then to see like who he is when he comes off stage, like that was really amazing to see like he can hold both of those things and that he really is both of those things absolutely and i can imagine again decade doing this project working on this project what did, and you like you all said you were growing up during this as well though you had your established careers what did you learn about yourselves <laughs> oh go ahead joyce <laughs> <laughs> i say like our partnership has been like a marriage truly like <laughs> committed to each other right like we're friends we're not gonna like bail on each other and we were so committed to this project I learned a lot about how I work and like what my strengths are and what my weaknesses are and Jessamine happens to be like a perfect complement in a lot of ways for me and I think that goes both ways and sometimes that's great and sometimes it's like so hard and yeah. so I think I learned that, right? Like how to be in a working partnership mm -hmm. and find a way to like work with our differences instead of like having it like make us both crazy all the time, which sometimes it does too. But like that, that's a, even when that's happening, like we've learned how to kind of navigate that. Yeah. And I can see that happen in, in any close working relationship. You know, we don't always think the same, we don't always have the same direction, but the overall uh, uh, goal is the same. What about you, Jessamine? Yeah, I would say the same. I mean, it's really interesting being in a partnership. It really highlights your own, you know, 
when you're working on something like this, it, the natural instinct is to think that your instincts are the whole picture. And when you're working with a partner, you realize, oh, they have opposite instincts, then that's a piece of the picture as well. And it highlights, you know, uh, really what your strengths and weaknesses are, um, which is something I was, you know, not aware of or much less aware of when we started this. So it's been a really interesting road for sure. Absolutely. And so decade goes by, you finished the, the project. Was it bittersweet saying goodbye to it? I know, obviously, you're excited to have it released, but was it bittersweet, like, we're done, we're finished it? There's no such thing as goodbye. It just continues and continues. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It'll always, it'll always be <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I think it definitely, this, now that it's been released in North America, yeah. it does feel like we reached a a culmination, you know, at each stage when we finished the cut, it was like, okay, we finished the cut, but now we have to get it out there. And then when we screened at festivals, it was like, right. okay, we we've screened at festivals, but now we have to find a distributor. And um, so each stage was, we were almost like, wait, we we're like, sh should we be drinking champagne now? Like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And every time it was like, no, it doesn't seem like it's time. And, <laughs> now at least i finally feel like okay like we have come to the goal of yeah. what we're about to do here and it released uh february 27th during black history month how significant was that that was huge yeah huge yeah and it was super dramatic you know up until a couple of weeks before the release we were still crowdfunding to make sure that we could cover our costs for the release so like there was almost this piece that was like are we really going to make it? Like, is this really going to happen? And so yeah. when we finally did make it and we made it in time for Black History Month and, and we were able to get it out there, that was truly um, a dream come true. Absolutely. What did Lee think of the film? He loves it. And that's been, I mean, for, yeah, I think for both of us, definitely for me, that's, you know, maybe the most, the most important piece mm -hmm. of all. Um, yeah. And he, you know, he has said before that it feels like a dream. It feels like he's just watching his life like it's a dream. Um, and, you know, that he he appreciates that his life is uh, his life story is there for people to watch. And we've also had some of his relatives come to screenings and say it's meaningful for them to see the family's story being told. So that's been amazing. Truly, truly amazing. I can yeah. imagine because it goes through the ups and downs, you know, highs and lows. I mean, almost seemed at one point thought the career was over and then there's this resurgence. And so I think that's a testament to anyone who's really a, a, uh, passionate about something and, you know, pursuing something. Uh, what do you want the the viewer to take away from this story outside of learning about this incredible man and his story? What, what else do you want them to learn? Yeah. Um, for me, it's really like, believe in yourself like have faith in yourself if you know you're here to do something like no matter what life is throwing at you like go do it and and yeah. don't give up until you're there and that that's like the lesson that I I take from Lee and that's also the joy in mm -hmm. seeing now it's like it, all of that hard work and and waiting for it to happen and not knowing how it's going to happen but continuing to have faith in himself as an artist, like that's ha why he's having the career he's having today. Absolutely. And still making would, music what about you, Jasmine. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. And I would just add that also um, Lee is such a good person. He's such a kind, open, gentle, warm, joyful person. And, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm sure that's not the case for everyone who's at his level of fame, let's say. Right. And it's really, you know, remarkable to be around him because he gives off so much joy and light. And so I think, you know, I hope when people see the movie, they feel that from him and they feel uplifted, not just because of his story being so uplifting, but also because he's just such a great guy, really. Absolutely. So what's next for both of you? Anything you can share? I know sure. a lot of times no, we can't share everything. Um, <laughs> so I'm in post-production on a narrative feature that I'm producing with a director named Keith Miller. Um, so we are starting to apply to festivals with that. 
and I am starting development on my next feature documentary. Awesome. So awesome. And where can we keep up with you, Joyce? Um, you can keep up with me on Facebook. Just find me, Joyce Michon, on Facebook and also my website, uh, www.joycemichon.com. Um, and yeah, and if you have a, a project that you're trying to get off the ground, send me a message. Hit her up. <laughs> what about you, Jessamy? Um, so I'm, uh, I, well, I'm doing a little bit of development on a documentary, a personal doc that I want to make about my dad, who's from Afghanistan. Mm. And then I'm also, um, I'm really, I love horror movies. And so I'm working on a horror movie script and I'm hoping to produce that as my next project. That's awesome. Where can they keep up with you? Oh, on my website, um, jessamineansari.com. Yeah. Well, it's a documentary it's called Lee Phil's Faithful Man. It's available on iTunes, Amazon Prime, Google Play, YouTube, Vimo, and, and more, wherever you uh, enjoy your great movies. We'll have a link in, in the uh, bio of this video. I want to thank you so much for taking time out your schedule. Congratulations on this project. I mean, a decade long in the works. Congratulations. And thank again, for, so more information, <laughs> for more information, go to our website, thestephenishow.com. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> 